Okay, so what we've got today is two planes here. This is the basic jack plane, and this is a smoothing plane. The jack plane means that it's for all basic carpentry, okay? It's, it's the most favorite tool. It's fairly heavy, fairly long, which means it produces a lovely flat surface. This one here is only really for smoothing, and smoothing is the action whereby we take a frame like this, and we plane around the surface. This is called smoothing. You might use it for other purposes, but it's mainly for that purpose. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you, the way the two planes work is identical, okay? And what we do, we put it onto a, a place like this and we take off, first of all, the lever cap. Now that's the lever cap, and the reason why it's called the lever cap is because you've got a lever. And what the lever does is to lock in place. And that lever is adjusted by this central screw here. We don't normally touch that screw, it's normally set about right. However, if the lever's a bit tight, we might release it a tiny bit. And if it's a bit loose, we might just tighten it a tiny bit. And you can normally do it by hand. You don't need to worry about using a screwdriver, although there is a slot if you want to use a screwdriver. So that's the lever cap. Then you take out the main um, blade assembly. And this is made up of two parts. You've got, you've got the blade the main sharpening blade on the back, and this is conveniently the same size as that slot there, so you can just pop it in and tweak it. And you undo that screw with your thumb, and then you slide it back off the blade. See that? You don't slide it over the blade, you slide it back off the blade, and then take it sideways. <coughs> this, is, um, this is the back iron, it goes on the back of the, of the blade, and this is the main blade itself. You could call it the iron. That's the cutting blade. Now these two pieces of metal, that's they're all, all these three pieces of metal are all made differently. This is made out of cast material, cast iron generally. This one is made out of super high grade steel, so it'll hold a good edge. This one is made out of spring steel. So all different three types of things. So what we do, by combining the two together, we combine the properties of both of them and lock them into one piece. So we've got the sharpness of a blade and we've got the springiness and the tough springiness of spring steel. That's how that works. Now what we're going to do is take this over to, this is our little sharpening device. This is a 1000 and um, I think it's a, it's a 500 grit um, uh, diamond stone. Okay. Inset into that, into, into the resin, a tiny little diamond. So if you could see it, with the microscope, it looked like a map of the, a picture of the Himalayas with mountains sticking up sharp. Every diamond will be a sharp point. And by the way, back onto this, um, there's a few other items on here. You've got the lateral adjustment. This is the thing here. I'll explain what that is. And then you've also got the forward and back adjustment. This is this, this, is this large turning uh, wheel here. You don't normally touch that much. It only adjusts a tiny bit either way. Okay, you've also got two screws here. If you ever you want to do some very fine woodworking, you can undo those two screws. This is this part of it's called the frog. You undo those two screws and you can adjust it to go forward to narrow the gap of the mouth. That mouth can go very narrow. The narrower it is, the finer the cut. Okay, but most for most work you don't normally touch that. But I'm just explaining. This is the forward knob and this is the um, the, the hand uh, at the back. Uh, the, 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 the thing itself is referred to like a foot would be. So this is called the sole, this is called the toe, and this is called the heel. So when you're talking about it, you've got something that you can, you can, you can uh, talk about. So that's the standard. And all of these uh, standing planes are of the same overall model and, and adjustment. There's very slight variations. So let's, let's go on to a sharpening process. So the first thing we need to do is to back off the blade, which means we just need to get hold of some water. And we put it onto the rough part, which is the 500 grit. I always put it on the corner of a bench because if you were going to be sharpening a, uh, um, a chisel, then the handle of the chisel wants to be sticking over the side. It isn't so important with a blade like this. And the first thing we do is put plenty of water because this is a water stone we need plenty of water i put this board on here simply because it doesn't mess up the bench with all the the metal being worn away so plenty of water goes on that. and the first thing we do then is to just put it on there and whoops and go up and down to actually back it up okay so we just lots of pressure especially at the tip 
Okay, that's the pressure. And uh, you don't have to wipe it all over the different parts of the stone. If it was a, an, if it was an oil stone, then it would be very important to keep spreading out because you would wear them out quite quickly. But with diamond backed on by steel, they don't wear out quite the same way. But I'm going all over it because I want, um, I want the, uh, I want to go to the areas of the stone where where the stone where the where the diamonds are still quite sharp. Okay. Obviously, they wear in certain parts. You'll notice a bit of brownness on there. By sharpening ordinary steel, then you create a tiny bit of rust. The actual steel itself is made out of stainless steel, so it doesn't rust. But what's been sharpened can rust, and that's why you have a little bit of a bit of brownness on there. And what we do, we do this quite thoroughly. Okay, can I just have a piece of rag or something to just wipe it? Anything at all. I won't. There we are. Just to wipe it clean, thank you. So what we've got now is a lovely flat surface. What I don't want, as I hold it up to the light, I flick it over my eyes, I don't want to see a bevel at the back edge. I want it to be dead flat. It's got to be dead flat at the back. And that's why we do what's called backing off. Some people have a habit of putting a bevel on the back of a blade, on a chisel or on a plane. And that, in my opinion, that's a bad practice. So once we've got to that point, we then need to get this um, plane up to its, its grinding angle. But on the 500, when you put it onto the stone like this, and you get your head where you can see the water moving out the way, you'll see that it should come in at about 25 degrees. Okay, and when you get to that point, you then lock your wrist nice and tight and you just come forward and back a little bit like this and you can hear it actually grinding away at that edge. And uh, you can hold it with another hand and just do it like this. The main thing is, this is in tension now. I've got a lot of tension in my wrist to stop it rocking. Okay, so you just go up and down like this, backwards and forwards. And that's probably enough to get the edge. Okay, so have a quick look at it. If you wipe the if you wipe the debris away, you can see what's actually happening. Okay, I need to go a tiny little bit steeper. So I find the same angle again and then go up a tiny bit more. I don't want to be going up too far. So just have a quick look at it in the light. Yes, that's it. I can see in the light what's happening. Okay, there's actually a little nick on the corner there, so I'll just do that. So this is at 25 degrees. A quick look again. That looks fine. Now what I need to do is I need to make sure there's no burr on there. So I just take the burr off like that. Okay, so that's all fine. Notice you get lots of water all, all over yourself. But that's okay, it's only water. Right, now we're on to the thousand grit and I want a little bit of water on there. And this is where you get the actual um, the actual edge nice and that, so the previous was grinding at 25 now at 30 we do honing so so we get onto the 25 initially then we come up those degrees to get onto honing again nice easy strokes up and down okay I want to come up too high 30 degrees is perfect Now all I'm going to do is have a look at it and see if it looks like a good clean edge, it does. Okay, so now what I do is I call pulling back. So you just put that onto the stone, get exactly the right edge, and you pull it straight back and off the edge. Whoops. Go back on again. So what I should be able to feel now is a burr. When I put my thumb across it, I can feel a burr sticking up. It's only very fine. It's like a hair sticking up, but it's made of metal. Now what I do is I take get rid of that burr, so I put it onto there and pull it back. Now that burr's gone. Now what I can do is I can actually put it on timber and I can improve that edge by just doing this on timber. Funnily enough, when you go back on timber, you can actually make that edge much, much sharper. You could do this on um, some leather or you can do this on wood. So this just proves, proves on the edge. Okay, so that's a lovely sharp edge now. Just wipe that clean. Now, when we're reassembling, we've got to be very careful we don't touch the edge. 
If you touch it with metal, you'll immediately get a dink in it and you'll get lines in the wood. Okay, so what we do, we put the spring steels on sideways. Okay, the back iron goes on sideways, slides all the way down. And then we turn it around and we bring it back up to nearly about two millimeters from the edge. Now what I tend to do is I put my hands on like this because all those fingers together enable it to become nice and level. And when I feel it's in a comfortable position, I'll just tweak it with my finger and then I'll just make sure it's nice and tight with a with the sprig with the back iron. Okay, and now we put it back into the plane. Now when I'm putting them back in, I always bring the plane up to horizontal. I don't want it to go like that and just go clunk and blunt itself. Okay, so I put it up to horizontal, lay it in nice and gently. And you'll notice as it goes in, it sits over this little knob, this little piece here, which is the adjustment that takes it forward and back. Okay. Um, and, on, and on the back of the blade, you've got information about the different angles. It's always on the back of the blade. There we are. So once we've got that comfortably, we now put this cap iron back on. And if I've got the cap iron set right, it should flick over. Ah, now that one's a little bit too tight, so I can just undo it a tiny bit. And just try it again, see if I get it to go with my thumb. Perfect. That's how you set it, okay? Now what we do, we turn it around and we look down the blade. As I'm looking down at the blade at the minute, I can see it's sticking out a long way. Now I can cause that blade to go back down by adjusting this, this large wheel. As I adjust it, it takes that little lever that's inside and just pushes it up and down. And it's only gonna go a distance of about two millimeters. But I wanna take it right the way down to a point in which I can nearly not see it at all, about the thickness of a hair. In fact, to, to be absolutely sure about it, and I'll have my glasses on and can I have a piece of white paper? Okay, now you can point it towards a window like this, or you can just have a piece of white paper behind it. That's right, just a piece of paper, there we go. Now that piece of paper enables me to see very, very carefully that that's exactly where it is, and I'm using this one to lower it down. It's nearly disappeared now. But when I look down it, I can see that the blade on this side is very high and that side is very low. So what I can do now, I can use this lateral adjustment. And as I turn it to the left, immediately it, it alters the blade and it makes that side go down and this side rise. So now I can rise it back up again a tiny bit. I want the blade to be nice and level in the middle of there. Okay, nice and level. And I think that that's about right. Let me just grab something and I'm going to show you a little... Okay, now I always in my kit have a piece of this um, candle wax with me. And this is what we use to put a little bit of lubricant on the base of the plane. Okay, so that little bit of lubricant will enable it to slide beautifully. Just put that over there and move that away as well. Now whenever you put a plane onto timber, it's, you never quite know how it's going to go initially. Oh, that's a nice cut. So let me wind it back just a little. I don't know whether you can see this. You probably can't see it from where you are. But I virtually can't see the blade at all. So you put a finger around the front and you squeeze really tight. You don't hold this like a hammer. You hold it with three fingers. Okay. And you must make sure you're in a good standing position to be able to work. And you should be able to get a cut that will go from one end to the other. And when you take the cut off, you should find that it's super fine and consistent. Okay? And that's how you that's how you use now using the um, using the jack plane is exactly the same procedure, so I won't go through all that at the moment. But that's how you set up and that's how you work with a basic um, um, smoothing plane.